for me when I transferred trust I got delayed because of so our BRP guys it's very specific to the hospital or the trust that that sponsored us Hi everyone, it's Danica and welcome back to my channel. To those who are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Danica. I'm a registered nurse in the Philippines and also here in the UK. If you're new here in this channel, then I encourage you to click on the subscribe button below and also the bell button beside it so that you will be notified every time that we have an update. <laughs> so guys, for today's video, actually, so finally, I will be able to tell you what is the process if you transfer trust here in the UK. So we're talking about when you're already here and for example you finish your initial contract and you're moving to a different place and like you know what is the process and what are the things that you're expected to you know provide and things like that. So yes if you guys are interested in this video then please keep on watching. Okay guys so we're just gonna go forward actually so after you actually had done the interview the job interview and they say okay you got the job <laughs> so normally this is within the day actually that you've been interviewed like few hours they'll surely call you by the end of the day to tell you if you got it or not so for example they said okay congratulations you got the job <laughs> so what's gonna happen next so actually the hr or the human resource of that hospital will actually email you not the manager or whoever interviewed you but it will be the hr to email you about the conditional offer so that's the first thing you will receive so this may take days to a week actually to arrive so don't you know don't be nervous if for example the next day you haven't received any it's just pretty normal because sometimes it could you know could be like slow and things like that depends on your hospital so yeah you will receive a conditional letter so basically you know it's just conditional so if you're able to you know do these things and stuff that's when they'll be able to offer you that job and also remember when once you got the job if you're not really sure I advise you not to put your resignation letter yet so this is just a tip guys if you're just transferring within the same hospital and it's just a different department you can go ahead and submit your resignation letter why because they already have most of your papers and definitely you will be fine actually if you just you know um, resign immediately that's what I did because I wanted to transfer faster <laughs> so it will take you actually two months for a band 5 to before you can actually transfer to a different department but it's actually a different thing when you're transferring to a different trust so I advise you not to resign yet even though they said you've got the job so what is going to happen after they emailed you this um, conditional offer? Of course, you'll see what the requirements they want. So there will be certain forms that you need to fill up. So you can see this if you sign up with track jobs, T-R-A-C, track jobs. You can actually monitor the progress of your application and what's pending and what's not. So they will also send you it through email actually. What are the things that you need to accomplish? Again, there are certain forms and also references they will check the references you've actually put before you actually got interviewed so make sure you actually contact your references if you if they said they've got the job because this could delay it as well for me when i transferred trust i got delayed because of the reference i put because if they didn't respond then that's like taking long actually you should just make sure that the whoever reference you put in would be able to actually respond to them so after all the forms that you need to fill up, documents, I'm not going to specify it anymore because there's going to be few and it will be different actually for whichever trust you're applying to. But what they asked me is my current biometric residence permit. You should still have that even though they will give you another one. So our BRP guys, it's very specific to the hospital or the trust that, that sponsored us. So if you transfer a different trust, you get to pay again for a different BRP. So for the moment, they will ask you, of course, of your current PRP, just to be sure that you know, you're legal and stuff. And then they ask for, obviously, my passport. And actually, they ask for a police clearance from the Philippines. So to those who are applying who's also coming from the Philippines, you can actually apply for your NBI online if you've had one. If you've had an NBI clearance from 2019, you can just actually um, fill up the form online and then they will send it to your house so it was just sent to my home in the philippines and i just asked my mom to scan it this is of course if there's no like um you don't have any hit or don't have any what do you call this 
complications in your NBI. So if you had one before from 2019 onwards, then you can just renew it online. But just check the NBI um, website because I was actually anxious initially because like, oh my gosh, so like, how will I get an NBI? And like, if you search online, you like you need to go to the embassy and blah, blah, blah. But not really. It's gotten easier for those who wanted to have your NBI. Just check the government website. It should be easy nowadays. Okay, and after that, the equivalent of the police clearance actually is the disclosure and burying service here in the UK. It's just checking for any criminal records and things like that. So you need to fill up a form again. If you remember, we've done this before we actually come here in the UK. So it's the same thing. They always need to check this DBS um, just because you know they don't have any records of you and things like that so you will actually receive also a physical copy but you can also track this online it will say this takes time though depending again it could take a week or two before you can actually have the dps so that's what they're gonna wait as well and the next would be a pay sorry I was just i'm looking at my phone because i've listed it so next actually is the pay slip from your previous trust so I'm not sure if this is because I'm on my second pay point or this is also an evidence from your previous trust, you know, but they will ask that as well. So yes, those are the things I'd say like that's the first like step, you know, those are the things that you need to provide when you actually had your conditional offer. Then after that, once everything is, you know, going into place, you would actually have your occupational health, which can be moved. This is not very strict actually. So just make sure if you had any vaccination record or if you're happy, that's what they're gonna always be asking. You know, because it's actually optional. If you have the evidence, they wouldn't bother really. But if you don't, that's fine because they can just have, you can just get your appointment like what they've done for me. And they will just inject you like, um, like a booster or something. Even though, you know, I said like I completed like my happy, I, I always forget to keep a record of it. So yeah, that's a good note actually. Just keep a record if you're happy or your vaccinations because they will ask that in the occupational health. Okay, so after all of this has been checked and everything's like, you know, you're good to go, everything's clear. So that's the only time they'll be able to actually send you your COS or your certificate of sponsorship. So by that time, you will need to actually pay for your own visa, which your own VRP, which again costs 247 pounds. So yeah, um, initially it's it took really long. The latest VRP, like, couple of months ago it's very fast now so i don't know what has changed so yeah the waiting time actually depends so i couldn't say but not until you've got actually your brp for your new trust you cannot start until you got that brp from them okay guys so fast forward about your starting date you can actually speak to your manager about this so for me when i transferred here because i'm relocating i wanted a two-week gap so that's what i asked my manager if i could start like this you know this date so it depends with you and your manager to talk about your starting date and also for like the uniform the badge and everything if you have any concerns or issues about you know before starting you just need to email your manager about it as well so yes, you would need to have your induction as well before starting, so not like day one, you know, immediately go to your department, no. So you would have your induction first. So depends if it's virtual like mine, or maybe some trusts do like a face-to-face -face now, so it's just all varies really. And lastly guys, before I finally forget, just always have the initiative to chase your application because with mine, there has been delays and like I really want to speed things up, so just always call the HR and your manager, keep in touch. So yes, that's it guys. If you have further questions, then please comment down below and I hope you enjoyed this vlog and it has become helpful and I'll see you again in my next one. Bye!